We'll be in the book of Luke, chapter number 10. Luke, chapter number 10. It is an honor to be here tonight. It is, thank you for the room and the, and the bag and all your, everything you've done for us. We have camp meeting up at our church once a year. And those ladies, man, they work their hinds ends off. They really do what goes on behind the scenes and what they do. They really put in a lot of work. They're the ones who put this thing together. And, and I sure appreciate them and I appreciate you. Amen. Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and with all thy, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there come down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise the Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, when he saw him, had compassion on him, and went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on tomorrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord. I pray, God, you'd help me, anoint me, Lord God. Get me out of the way. Pray, God, you'd use me for just a few minutes. Pray, God, I'd be a help to these dear people here tonight, Heavenly Father. God, Lord, if you don't help me, I'll be no help to them, Lord God. I pray you'd just use me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I have the Lord's give me this burden for guys who was like me. Guys who were strung out in the streets, addicted to drugs. Uh, have nowhere to go, they're heartbroken, they have no family, they have no loved ones. He'd give me a burden for those guys. And I go and I hunt them down, amen. I go find them and to get a hold of them. I try to tell them what the Lord's done for me, amen. But like the Bible says here, he just showed mercy on him that Jesus said, go and do thou likewise. I want to preach on this thought, like a good neighbor, Jesus is there. Like a good neighbor, Jesus is there. You know, State Farm has the slow go that they, and it implements that they'll always be there, amen? But I wouldn't put too much confidence in that because they're probably going to try to weasel out of giving you any money for whatever they owe you, amen? But Jesus will always be there for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll always be right there with you wherever you go. The light will always be on up his house. The phone won't never be busy. You can call on him anytime you want to, amen? But in this, but in this parable here, we see it's the state of the Good Samaritan. Amen. We see what Jesus can do with a guy who's been wounded, somebody who's been stripped. We see that he can take a man, pick him up, save him, and put him in a local church somewhere under the care of a pastor. Amen. Until he comes back. Amen. It's kind of personal to me because that's what the Lord's done for me. Amen. Tomorrow will mark five years that I was over at Brother Rocky's and I graduated the program, the Sons of God and all that. And I graduated and I went home and God's been good to me the last five years. I've faced some opposition and I've come across some things that, uh, that I might I could have run from, but I didn't. I just faced him right ahead because Jesus is the very best neighbor I could ever have, amen. But he was always there for me, and he's always helped me, amen. And he'll always be there for you, amen. But I want you to notice in verse number 30, and Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Number one, people are damaged. They're heartbroken. They're hurt. There's, there's things that's happened to them in their lives. There's emotions that come inside them that they don't know how to deal with. They lash out whenever things happen like that. They turn toward drugs. People are damaged. They're heartbroken. They're helpless. And they're, they're without hope in God in this present world. Their hope is in the end of a needle. Their hope is in the bottom of a bottom. Of a bottle. Amen. I'm glad tonight that my hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't hope in 
doing that same old stuff no more. I don't hope in the dope no more. I thank God that I'm sitting in the church house and not down at the jail house. Amen. I'm not sitting down to dope house no more all because of what the Lord's done for me. Amen. But it said the thieves left him half dead. Amen. We was half dead in our trespasses and sins until he come by our way and saved our ever dying soul out of hell. And thank God I'm not going to hell. Amen. I'm not going to hell no more. But people are damaged. Amen. They've all they've gone through a lot of things. Uh, I was I, I got this guy I'm dealing with right now. He's a he's a real big gang banger and he's a drug dealer and and I've known him for a long time. But but brother, I don't care what they look like. And I don't care what they've been through. And I don't care what they're doing right now, but I invite them to church. Amen. They come up there to the camp meeting we had a couple weeks ago. And after church, he said, Brother, it's sure good to see you like this. I said, It's all about what the Lord's done for me, brother. It ain't nothing I've done. I like to take the credit for you because we can go out here on the side of the road somewhere and we can pick up some drunk on the alleyway and we can bring him to church and we can dress him up in a suit and cut his hair. But once you cut him loose and he goes back out, he's going to look the same way as he did when you picked him up a couple weeks ago. Amen. Because there ain't no change in their heart. There ain't no change. Without Jesus, I promise you, they stand no chance. You can go whatever rehab you want to. You can go try whatever you want to. But until you try Jesus, you ain't tried the right thing. Amen. And I believe that with my whole heart. Amen. I don't waver about that at all. There is no negotiating with me about that. If there is no Jesus, there is no change. Amen. But the people are damaged. Amen. They've been damaged by sin. Sin's come by their way and it stripped them. It stripped them of their kindness, their intelligence, their respect, and of their testimony. Amen. Your testimony will be the most important thing that you ever have in your life. Amen. I love to tell people all the time what the Lord's done for me. I get them in that big truck riding down the road, and I get to talking to them, and it seems like an hour goes by before I know it. I come back to myself. I've done poured my whole heart out to them. I've done told them everything the Lord's done for me, and they're sitting over there scratching their head, probably going, boy, I wish he'd shut up. Amen. But that's what the Lord, that's what's going to attract people to you is your testimony. Amen. That's what's going to do it. I, I, uh, God's done some things for me that, that wouldn't make you scratch your head. Amen. I was facing a whole lot of trouble but he come by my way and he got me out of all that trouble. Amen. And then when people hear about it, they come to me. Sometimes they ask me. And some people say, oh, he had to tell on somebody. But I never told on nobody. I never had to tell on nobody. I just had to call on somebody. And when I called on him, he come by my way. Amen. And he saved my soul. Amen. I told him over at Crossroads, I said, if you'll save me out of this mess I'm in, I'll do anything for you. I'll do whatever it is. I was over about six months, and I felt like he just called me to preach. And I was walking down that breezeway toward that chapel, and I was going, Lord, you must be talking to the wrong person. Amen. I couldn't even stand up and present a paper in class when I was in high school. I'd get so nervous. Amen. But sin will strip them. Satan will strip them. Amen. They stole from them. Stole their health and their joy. He'll steal your fellowship with God. Amen. And that's what he'll do to them. Amen. He's done that to people. And now they won't get back in church. They get so full of pride. Some people will never walk back through the, through the doors of the church. Amen. Because something's happened to them and they've got built up in pride. Somebody in the church has hurt them. Amen. But they stole from them. He stole those things from them. And then he struck them. Amen. Satan, sin, and the society. The society we live in is not built to help people anymore. Amen. It's built to tear people down. Amen. And I tell my children all the time, I don't let my children listen to their cell phones. They don't even have one. They get one for an hour a night to watch YouTube. And they don't get to put headphones in their ear. And they got to sit right in there with us whenever they're on that. I'm going to guard the gate for my children. I'm not going to let that filthiness go in their ears and through their eyes. Amen. Because I know what it causes. Amen. I know what it'll do to them. It'll drag them down that wrong road. I want to keep them in the house of God. I want to keep them singing at the house of God. I want to keep them listening to the preacher at the house of God. Amen. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to guard the gate for my children. So when, they, when Satan does come by their way, and try to steal from them and strip them, they'll know better. Yeah. They'll know him. They'll know the wiles of the devil, amen. The Bible says train them up in the way they should go, amen. Yeah. amen. And then they left him stranded. The Bible said they left him stranded, and that's just exactly what the devil will do to you, amen. He'll leave you stranded. Once he's done with you, once he's wore you out, once he's hooked that old rope around your ankles and tied it around the horn of that saddle and drug you about 100 miles through the desert, he cuts that old rope, he's going to leave you stranded right in the middle of the desert. Nobody's going to be able to recognize you. You, you, I remember when I first went over there to Crossroads. If you think I'm skinny now, I weighed about 140 pounds. I weighed about 200 pounds. And I weighed about 140 pounds. My teeth was infected in the back. I couldn't even hardly chew my food. I couldn't even hardly get up out of the bed. Every break they gave me, I went in there and I had to lay down and rest because the devil and the world done drug me through the mud. And that's exactly what he done to me. There's people out like that, out there like that today. And like I said, I like to go by their way. 
and tell them what the Lord's done for me. Amen. I like to go by their way. People are damaged with verse 31. And by chance there come down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, the Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. So not only are people are damaged, but the passerbyers are disinterested in helping them. Amen. It's, a bar- it's embarrassing that most Americans won't act like good Samaritans. Amen. They just go right by them, act like because they got tattoos all over their arms, because they got tattoos on their face, because they're strung out on drugs, they ain't no good for nothing, they ain't no good for nobody. Well, I'll tell you something, friend. You send them down there to Landmark Baptist Church in Morristown, we'll preach to them if you don't want them in your church. Amen. I can promise you that. Amen. You send them right on down there. But the preoccupied people never saw him. They said they went around on the other side. They was preoccupied, too busy, worrying about themselves, worrying about everything else. They wasn't worried about that old wine old down the alleyway. By the way, the only difference between you and that wine old down the alleyway is what the grace of God in your life. Amen. That's the only difference. Shame on you if you ever think you're better than they are just because they're hooked on drugs, they're hooked on the needle, they're hooked on the bottle. You ain't no better than they are. It's just the grace of God in your life. Amen. They was pre- the preoccupied. Amen. But then the prophet seekers was afraid they was going to lose a little bit of money. Amen. I have this one old boy that I got to go over at Crossroads. His name's Billy. He's been over there like 16, 17 months now. Whenever he went to jail, he come out of prison. He looked worse when he got out of prison before he went in. Because, you know, they get drugs in there but easier than they can on the streets. I went by his way, and I, call, and, I, and, I, and I got him a job with me. And then he got strung back out on drugs because there was no change in his heart. There was no Jesus, just like I was saying earlier. And he ended up in jail. He called me from jail. He said, will you come bomb me out? I said, I'll pray about it. And I prayed about it. And I prayed about it. I went on vacation. We was gone for two days. I never called a bondsman. I never told nobody about it. I prayed about it. I was on my way home from vacation, just by myself. I was riding by myself. And the phone rings. It was a bondsman on the other line. He said, I heard you got a brother down there in the Hamlin County Jail. I said, yes, sir, I sure do. He said, are you going to come and bond him out? I said, the only way I'm bonding him out is if I come and get him. I'm not coming until I got a day off, and I'm taking him straight over to Crossroads. So I called down there, and I got it set up where I could get him out, and I took him right over there. Amen. It, cost me, it was going to cost me some money. It, it cost me some money to get him out. I had to pay like half of the money to get him out. But I wasn't worried about the money. What's a few hundred dollars? What's five hundred or thousand dollars for somebody's soul? Amen. See God work in their lives. Amen. But I went down there and I bonded him out and I took him over and he got over about two weeks he got saved. He got him all brand new teeth. Amen. He's got him a little girlfriend over there. He's got him a good job, going to get married, and I'm so proud of him. Amen. But you never know who you're going to go by their way. Amen. You never know. And you might have to spend a little money on them, but you never know. I've been lied to. I've been cheated. And I've been uh, ripped off. Amen. Trying to help people. But that's all right. There's been times where I felt like I ain't going to help nobody else. But then somebody else comes around the corner. I can't help it. God put it in my heart. And I don't worry about it no more. Amen. But then the pleasure seekers, amen, they were too busy as well. And then that pious crowd who thought they wouldn't be no good in the church. They can't pay no tithes. They ain't got no time. They ain't got no suit. They can't help the church. They can't do this and they can't do that, amen. But like I said, send them down there to Landmark Baptist and we'll preach to them if you think they won't be no good for your church, amen. But the passerbys was disinterested. Verse number 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pulling in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. We see a physician was dispatched to this man. Amen? He come by, and he showed compassion on him. He picked him up, showed him mercy, and showed him grace. Ain't you thankful? for the mercy and the grace of God in your life. Amen. And it said he poured oil and wine and bound up his wounds. Oil and wine represents the Holy Spirit of salvation and strength in the Bible. Amen. He saved that old boy. He showed compassion on him. Amen. And then he put him on his own beast, it said, and took him to an inn. Put him on his own carriage. And then we see the Savior's care. It says he brought him to an inn and took care of him. Jesus can fix whatever's going on in their life. Amen. If you just go by their way, I promise you, and show them a little bit of love. It might take a little while, 
But show them a little bit of love. Show them what God's done in your life. Tell them that you love them, amen, no matter what it costs. You're going to get heartbroken sometimes, and you are going to get discouraged. But you just go by the way, and you hand it over to Jesus, amen. But he went by his way. He can heal the broken home, the broken hearted, the broken health, amen. He's done it for me, amen. My kids and my, my, my wife, well, we wasn't married then when I went to Crossroads. But I got over there, and I was over there like 90 days or so, and we got a home pass, and I come home, and I seen her the first time she seen me. I was staying over at my dad. She lived with my mom. I seen her the first time she seen me. There was like this look in her eyes. Like something was different. I could, I could see it in her eyes. And then I was going to church. We was going to church on a Wednesday night. And we was going up that hill over there toward that church. And she was driving. She wasn't going to church with me then. She was going to drop me off. And I looked over at her. I said, hopefully one day you and them kids will be going to church with me up here. And we are now. Every, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday night, we go up that same hill over there where I told her that same thing, amen. And I think about it just about every time we go up that hill over there, amen. amen. But then we see protection was delegated. He said, and on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said it to him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. He took him to an end. So he picked up that old boy off the side of the road somewhere. That old boy that nobody thought there was no hope in. That old boy they thought wouldn't be no good for their church. That old boy that everybody thought was just useless. He picked him up and he saved him. Amen. He, he didn't have a suit at tie at first when he got down to the church house. But he got down to the church house under that pastor's wing. And that pastor used him. Amen. He got him a good job and he went and bought him a few suits and ties. Amen. That he could wear to church. Amen. That's just how my life's been. God picked me up off the side of the road. Amen. Matter of fact, my dad sitting back there. He come down there to the Hamlin County Jail and he bonded me out. You know what? Some churches don't even believe that God can really change somebody anymore. They don't believe in the real power of God. I was there when my dad got saved. I remember what God did for my dad. I remember how mean he was. I remember how much he used to cuss us and kick us around, amen. And I seen that change in his life. And he knew that if he could just get me around the things of God, amen, that God would change my heart and he'd change my life. And that's exactly what he's done for me. You ought to have somebody all the time that you're working on. There ought to be somebody on your mind all the time that you're thinking about, that you're praying about, that you can't help them, amen. If you're not, shame on you, amen. If you're not. The Bible says they had addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints that you should submit yourselves unto such. That you should submit yourselves unto such. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.